Um, so we are going to be doing uh, one and only review, and that is going to be for David Lynch's Dune, uh, Dune 1984. Like I said, because the new Dune film, Dune Part 2, is coming out March 1st. Uh, this is by Denny Villeneuve. So I had to go back. So I had to look at uh, David Lynch's Dune. I had never seen it before. Have you seen? You've seen David Lynch's Dune before. Right? Yeah, I've seen it a, uh, a couple times, but it, it's the last time. It's probably been 15, almost 20 years since I watched it. Okay, and you've also read the book as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think this is, I like, like I said, before the review, uh, I think that this one looks more eventful than the first one did. I thought the first one was okay. Uh, a lot of setup, uh, you know, a lot of building up because it is a little bit of a, maybe a complicated story, convoluted type story. Um, and we're going to be getting into this film, the 1984 one, which whether it kind of uh, does a good job of portraying that story. So, this Dune 1984 film, there had been many attempts to make a Dune movie beforehand, uh, one in the 70s, um, and this is based on a book, uh, an adaptation of a book by Frank Herbert, uh, a book that came out in 1965. Um, and like I said, many, many different attempts there, um, and then it kind of, a lot of it kind of had it, uh, its thunder stolen from Star Wars, which came out in 1977, which if you watch Dune, uh, damn, it got a lot, Star Wars got a lot from Dune uh, in terms of the spice, which is basically like what the powers you can get and everything like that. A lot of that stuff is like the force and everything like that. So, you know, that, that kind of comes into play. But uh, what is what is Dune about? So uh, here I'm trying to going to simplify it as much as I can. Uh, so there is this planet and the planet of Dune here. Um, and this planet of Dune holds all this spice. It is the main uh, harbiter of spice, which is this great material in this universe and this uh, galaxy. It's, a, it's something that Everybody fights for it. If you have the spice, it gives you special properties, abilities. It can help you with space travel. And a lot of it is on this planet of Dune. Um, you do have uh, two main families that you hear. Uh, family of Atreus, who that's what you mainly see here. Paul Atreus, who's the lead character here of Dune. And then of Harkonnens, uh, who are direct rivals to uh, the Atreides here. And so you see that a lot of you have this also emperor of the galaxy uh, as well, who funnels a lot of the spice. And so he invites a lot of the Atreides over to the planet of Dune to help uh, kind of look over it, to uh, kind of take control of the planet, basically. And then a lot of that is a setup for them to be betrayed by House uh, Harkonnes to, be, you know, to basically wipe them all out. And you basically see the conflict of them fighting over this in the film. So that's basically... I guess the setup, a basically simple, simplified version of it, I can say. Uh, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I, th I think that's a pretty good, I think that's pretty good, like, back of the book plot synopsis. Okay. Um, and it also, you can also, the beginning of the movie, it also opens up with Virginia Madsen basically explaining all of it, too. You can have her, you know, <laughs> much more beautiful face there explaining everything about the, the whole kind of premise of the movie, too, there. Uh, do you like that kind of... Uh, way they kind of did that uh you know uh i i think it's a little repetitive because i i think the very following first scene in the throne room with the emperor kind of just goes over the same information a second time so i feel like you, you've got one or the other honestly mm. yeah. and did you ever find it with this movie difficult to follow uh, because it seems like it's a movie that maybe you have to watch a couple times. Because the beginning of it seems like it's a good setup of introducing you to the emperor and then introducing you to the kind of the a little bit of the setup of the movie, but then kind of when it kind of gets going, it may kind of go a little bit all over the place. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I remember watching this as a, as a kid before having read the book, and, and it, it definitely around the halfway point, I, I remember I would start to. It would just start to lose me a little bit about what was going on and, and how things were pr progressing in the story. I could I could easily see this be confusing on a first time watch. Yeah, um, you do. Uh, so the cast here. Um, this was written by David Lynch. This was directed by him. The cast. You have Tyle McLaughlin, uh, who is the Paul Atreides, who is the maybe the Messiah here um, of a lot of the leader people in Dune. Uh, and then you see the Dune actually has a native population already there uh, that you see there. Um, you also have Patrick Stewart who's in this. Uh, you also have, for some reason, Sting is here. Uh, I guess Sting was a, 
I mean, he was very big at the time, but I mean, he's, he's here. He plays uh, one of the Harkonnens. Uh, you also have Virginia Madsen, who I mentioned there. Uh, you also have as well, uh, yeah, uh, Dean Stockwell is here as well. Br Brandon Dorf, who's Chucky, the voice of Chucky, he's here again. That's like okay, Brandon. Yeah. Dorf, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Throw, throw a little Patrick Stewart in there too. Yeah, Patrick Stewart. Um, yeah. Uh, so like I said, that's kind of the main cast here that you have of the movie uh, set up. It, I will say, it does have the Lynch weirdness if you've seen it. Um, if you've seen the movie, uh, in this movie, when it came out, big budget, but flopped terribly. Um, didn't make very good box office. I think this movie, um, so had a budget of 40 to 42 million and the box office was only 30 to 37.9 million was the final box. So really flopped terribly. Didn't really find an audience. I think they were maybe trying to maybe grasp. They wanted this. I think the studio wanted this to be another Star Wars type of situation where they wanted another big sci-fi kind of epic movie, and that just wasn't this at, at all. Uh, when the movie opened up in theaters, just much like the book, there's a list of terms there that you have to know before going into the movie, and I think that also threw people off. It's like, you know, I didn't come to watch, a, to see a movie to read. I came to enjoy this, you know what I mean? I want to <laughs> remember all this stuff going into it, and that's all the way, also the way with the book as well, right? It's like, there's a whole list of terminology there before you even get into it. Um, being a someone who's read the book, what the, you know, what kind of key differences do you see between the book and then this movie here? Well, I, I would say that the, the probably the big key difference is that this adaptation leaves out 60, 70 percent of the entire narrative because it is it's got so little time to try and tell this whole story in a single film that, you know, you end up getting you know, long, long sequences of just montage to move through this. And it's, I mean, you know, it's almost like reading the cliff notes of the book in certain ways. It it really, really rushes through the material. Mm, yeah. And uh, Dave Lynch, he's spoken famously down on this movie, hates this movie, uh, hates what he went through as far as the studio interference and that kind of, warned him off of ever working with uh, uh you know i mean doing a big budget project again with the studio and mostly doing smaller budget movies where he could have most of the control and he's spoken about it plenty of times like this instance here where he does his interview with dune uh, i didn't I, have final cut on it's the only film i've made that i didn't have i didn't technically have final cut on the elephant man but mel brooks gave it to me and on dune I started selling out even in the script phase, uh, knowing I didn't have Final Cut, um, and I I sold out. So it was um, it was a slow, dying the death, and a m terrible, terrible experience. Do you regret making <laughs> Yes, uh, except um, it just nailed <laughs> this idea. Never, ever do a film without Final Cut. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he talks about it pretty, I mean, like I said, painful experience. Hate working with it, didn't have Final Cut of it. And then um, people have wanted him to do his Final Cut of the movie. Uh, there is a longer version of this. I think that's like four hours long. Uh, Universal has asked him multiple times to come back and to, you know, cut up the movie to do the, you know, to do his cut of it, the Lynch cut. I guess that was the original, I guess, you know, before the Snyder cut, there was the Lynch cut. <laughs> that and um, he's refused multiple times. He's uh, you know to I mean to come back and cut up the movie and to do his own version of it there. Uh, but I think the most of it is like okay, there's just kind of like longer scenes I think, and you know some unfinished VFX stuff. I mean, it's really not much there that you could really kind of do there. But um, yeah, I, I I mean, so there's kind of that. Uh, but you know, Dave Lynch obviously has went on to do you know other really amazing movies there, as he as he mentioned, like The Elephant Man, as he done, and then working with Kyle uh, McLaughlin, he also did Twin Peaks with him, so that's, he built that relationship with him, and he wanted that was a, a very successful show. Um, what is your opinion on uh, Dune 1984? There, well, you know, I'll start off by saying uh, I think going back and watching this, there is something refreshing about seeing a, a sci-fi film set in space and set on other worlds with so much practical effects going on. Uh, in particular, the Giddy Prime planet, which is the Harkonnen uh, home world. Uh, I, think, I think seeing like the interior, these big metallic corridors, 
and all these environments. There, there's some really cool about the sets that they're they're building and some of the costumes that they put together here. Uh, you also have things, yeah, like the practical effects for the sandworm. I think that's really great. Um, that's where I start to tap out on uh, positive things to say. Uh, I, I think this this is you know, and it, not to the fault of David Lynch because he he clearly just said he did not have a lot of control here. But uh, I, I think this movie just kind of wipes its ass with source material. I'm not going to lie. It is incredibly goofy. I think the script misses pretty much all the nuance of the story. Uh, you run into things that they, they introduce weird elements like, you know, I, 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 I famously weird scene where he's like, you got to milk this cat with a rat duct tape to it to get the antidote to the poison we gave you. That's not in the book. I don't know what's happening here. Sting is ridiculous every time he's on screen. You got the fly, <laughs> flying Harkonnen in there, which I, I can't help but laugh every time it shows up in that footage. Uh, yeah, I you know I think this is a personally I think this is a so bad it's good sort of experience. Uh, I think there's a, a great unintentional comedy here, um, but. You know, I I don't know how much I can recommend this as a movie outside of that particular way of experience. Again, yeah. Um, as you mentioned, uh, yeah. I mean, the sets are beautiful. I mean, really nice looking. At, you know, practical effects here. Like you mentioned, uh, the sandworm. The sandworm looks fantastic. Um, here, the way they kind of portray it, uh, that looks. I think that still holds up really well. I think at the time when this movie came out, a lot of people were talking about maybe it looked the best, even in nineteen eighty four. Uh, but I think, you know, you mentioned yes, when they go to the, the home world of the Harkonnens, that looks really good. I like that. Uh, again, the sandworm. It's just that with the sandworm, um, like when they're actually kind of riding it, that's when it kind of looks the worst. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Like right here. Yeah, that looks like a, that kind of looks <laughs> yeah. like the SNL kind of skit there. I mean, that, it, that, it that, that just kind of looks really the, Looks like they're on the green screen of a weather station. Yeah, I mean that looks really bad. It just it's in contrast to actual worm itself. It's like, yeah, that's just kind of not the best there. Uh, so all that kind of looks works really well there. Uh, I think you mentioned Sting um, as one of the Harkonnens there, the one of the villains. Um, I think he does add a sense of energy to the movie, a sense of personality to the movie that's not really there. Like a lot of people are very buttoned up, uh, very you know, kind of you know, very stiff. And I think he adds a sense of person, especially when he first shows up. I mean, in in the in the movie, and this is how he first shows up. First appearance in the movie, boom, right there, in kind of this weird underwear. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> out there. Uh, I don't know how the hell he did that with his arms. I don't know like how the hell he did that. Like, that's very strange. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, very very weird. So I think that is a great like. A, entrance of a character there uh and kind of what he does and then in i think in the second do movie he's character he's the austin butler character is going to be in the movie yeah so he's yeah. that character um so yeah we'll see him there um and then we think about a sci-fi movie you think about so it does a good job at introducing you to the world showing you all this great stuff characters are lacking um i also will say the action is somewhat lacking there. Um, you know, it's not a very action heavy. I don't know about the book, but is the book a lot of like some? No, the book is the book is the, and that's the thing about like uh, you know the part one of the newer films being very slow. The book's it's a it's a slow story like all the way through. I like I think the part two. Yes, it will be more action heavy, but I still think it's going to be slower than some people might be expecting. It's a it's a slow narrative. Uh, the characters in general are even in the book they almost feel like walking archetypes some of the time rather than like full, super fleshed out characters. Uh, it spends a lot more time on kind of broader philosophical ideas in a more, in a more large scale sense. Uh, and it's something that I think works really well on, on the page. And I think it can be translated, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that this movie did the, a great job with that idea. <laughs> Yeah, like you have moments like this, which they do a lot of kind of knife battles in here, uh, when they kind of square not off. Mood. Not in the mood. Moods a thing for cattle and love play, not fighting. I'm sorry, Gurney. Not sorry enough. 
then it turns into Minecraft there. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's not a special effect. <laughs> um, because this is supposed to be training like the shields that they have, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that obviously that looks pretty bad. I mean, you can't even really make out what's happening, what's going on, who's even winning, who's losing. Um, you also had like the invasion scene where uh, House Atreides attacks, uh, House, I mean, Harkonnen attacks there. And I don't know about for you, did you find this kind of confusing? It seems like it's just kind of like a lot of people just running around. No, oh, I think crazy. this is shot super poorly. Yeah, it's 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 just kind of masses of people. I appreciate that they're in real costumes. You know, that's one thing. But they're, they're just kind of running around in groups against a smoky background that's covering up most of the environment. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, I would not blame anyone if they didn't even know what the result of the sequence was supposed to be the first time they saw it. Yeah, so that's just, it's kind of confusing. Like everybody, like I said, masses of people just kind of running around. Stuff is blowing up that's covering the actors. Uh, you just can't really see anything too well. Uh, that's a major issue. Uh, you know, yeah, so, I mean, that has a lot of problems. And you mentioned the script of it. Uh, the script is also not the best either, and it's probably probably definitely one of the weakest Lynch script, but like I said, you can't really blame Lynch too much on that of, of much of the studio interference there. Um, do you feel like any moment? I mean, has Lynch ever talked about like much of like was he a fan of the book at all? Or you know, I've never read him say one way or the other. I, I imagine he must be if he took the job to begin with, uh, especially for him to be willing to try and do a studio movie. He, I feel like he must have been a fan of the source material, but I, I can't say for sure. Yeah. Uh, but they did try to, I mean, they did also the whole kind of roll out of there, like I said, trying to increase the popularity of it. They had the whole toys, like they had the Star Wars toys there. Um, I guess little kids didn't want to play with the sting, you know, cat, rat, you know, milk, uh, milk trapper there. Uh, they didn't want to do that, I guess. That wasn't really What child that. doesn't want to milk a cat? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have the nice little figures here. I guess uh, these are very weird toys. Uh, there and that's the uh, the cat right there. That's the little cat that you can have there. Actually, I kind of want that. Actually, now that I've seen this movie, I kind of want the sting plus the. I think you get that as a combo. Uh, <laughs> to be something fun to put on like the shelf behind what you're streaming. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, still has that '80s. I mean, still has that action figure look of not getting the facial expressions of anybody right, not getting the actual likeness <laughs> there. Because uh, this is supposed to be Kyle uh, McLaughlin, uh, McLaughlin's character here, Paul Atreides, doesn't look anything like him at all. Uh, this is supposed <laughs> to be Sting, doesn't look anything like Sting. Uh, that looks like actually a Oompa Loompa, actually. It looks like kind of a Oompa Loompa. <laughs> uh, I yeah. believe a Loompa Loompa would be milking a cat before I would think Sting would. So, uh, uh, But, yeah. Huh. So those was, yeah, I guess trying to capitalize there, trying to do some toys, some merch with the Doom, but this is not a, I don't think, a merch sci-fi uh, uh, thing there that kids are going to go, especially with a movie like this. This is more a philosophical, heady kind of sci-fi movie. It's not something like Star Wars where it's more like, yeah, you know, space adventure, shoot 'em up kind of, yeah, that type of thing. Um, yeah, what do you think, you know, besides the effects, what else do you really, is there anything else you really thought was pretty strong in the movie? No, <laughs> just, just be just be honest. I, I I I really don't. I think I think you got some great uh great effects and practical sets and costumes, but yeah, I I I think the acting is pretty corny across the board. I think the script is pretty weak across the board. Editing, I think, is confusing at times. It does not portray what's going on very well. Yeah, I yeah, I really don't have have much else positive. I don't think. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's it's kind of fun in a way of kind of an attempt at this kind of epicness space opera. I think that that's kind of good. Um, I think I can see why it would kind of be a cult class. There are fans of this movie who, you know, seem like they do acknowledge the issues with it. Um, I, you know, I said before I was talking to you, it's like if Peter Griffin, when he made The King and I and Family Guy, I mean, he made, <laughs> you know, he tried to do this, completely change it. And, I mean, Peter Griffin as The King and I probably made a lot more sense and you could probably follow it a lot easier than even, you know, 1984 there. I mean, you could probably follow it a lot easier. Um, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about the the knife battle, you know, with him and uh, Sting? Is you... 
Oh, it's it's. I think that's such a weak, core, weakly choreographed action scene. I mean, they they, they barely look like they're even hitting each other. Uh, and this is it right here. Um, they're kind of going around. That guy needs to shave his eyebrows, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um. Wow. Not really a lot of intensity there. Um. Yeah. Not like a whole lot. Of I think Sting is really giving it. Damn, he just been trying. Uh. Yeah, I think he's having a lot of fun with it. He's going with it. Uh. The outfits. I, I would say the costume design is pretty nice. Costume design, production design. Oh, I forgot to mention also Shay Young. Uh, as people may know Shay Young. Oh, yeah. Um, there wasn't she also that crazy person that tried to convince her somebody to, for her to be Catwoman. Uh, I don't remember that, but you, you're probably right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, I could see where this movie could have gone and could have obviously been a lot better, especially under Lynch's direction. Uh, of it is just a, one of the clear examples of studio interference of coming in and and really destroying something. Um. And how would you compare this 1984 Dune to Dune uh, One? How would you compare it to the to the new film? I, I mean, I really liked the new film. It's as slow as it is, and I, you know, that was a complaint for me with the new one. Is it it especially leaves off in an unsatisfying way, and it's because it's only half a story. Uh, that's that's kind of the, the main reason for that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a much better adaptation of the book. It still might not be perfect. There is so much world building and lore in the book that it's 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 kind of impossible to get it all. But I, I honestly think that's about it's about as good as you probably could get as a, as an adaptation of that book, or at least that first first part of that book. Um, I think Dune nineteen eighty four is a laughably bad movie. Uh, I, and I actually think it's very entertaining, and I I really appreciate it on that level. It's like a Something like Nicolas Cage's Wicker Man for me, where I, I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I just would not say that it is good. Mm. Yeah, and there was the in the trailer you saw the shield scene there where they kind of fight with the shields, except they don't look like Minecraft. Uh, uh, yeah, there. you know, what I mean, that's a much better effect there. Where they kind of do with it that you actually can tell like who's winning, and they have actually like who's being hit and everything. Uh, that's kind of a much better there. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous looking movie. Uh, obviously, you know, this movie obviously made in modern day has the benefit of that, of that modern day technology, seeing it on IMAX, especially. Um, it, it's a way to see it uh, for sure, uh, to see it on IMAX. Um, and, like, it, you know, it's going to be three films. And at one point, a lot of people consider Dune uh, to be like something like Lord of the Rings, where it is unfilmable. Like, other people are like, you can't film this because it's just so much material, so dense, so big, so much terminology that you have to know going in. Um, you know, there's no way you're actually going to be able to do this. So, in an effort to actually do that, so it's almost you have to give props there. Um, and oh, do you yeah. think with the newer one, they basically come the closest or the best at adapting the book? There. Oh, I think so for sure. Uh, and and you know, versus Lord of the Rings, where you know you were still able to get a book per movie, uh, this is one book that's being split into two movies, and it's it, that, that's and that's part of why that first one feels a little slow and maybe unsatisfying, right? Is it's it's not even an entire book. Um, I I'm curious how much they can they can get out of the series. Uh, the the second one should be covering the rest of the first book, and then they they are talking about doing a third one that that'll adapt book two. Um, there's six of these that Frank Herbert wrote before he died and, and another four or five, I think that his son wrote afterwards. Uh, I, you know, you talk about things being unfilmable. It gets about 10 times weirder and more incoherent post uh, starting with the third one. So I, I'm going to be real curious to see if they try and push that far. Mm. Well, I know Denny Villeneuve said he wants to cap it off do three. I don't think he wants to maybe do past that. Uh, we'll see. But it, it is fun to, you know, look at this movie as what it was, you know, movie of its time, uh, you know, kind of an experiment almost in a way. Uh, look, we mentioned, you know, good costumes, good production design, good effects there. It's just everything else is not so good. I can see why it does have fans today. Um, there and it, it does. It's kind of so incoherent. It, it kind of is good in a that makes it kind of good uh, in a bad way, almost like it kind of turns the circle completely there. 
and there's some kind of when it was kind of House um, Harkonnen, they were I think giving some good performances. You know what I mean? I think the dude who looked like he was had an STD, I think he did pretty well. Um, that, That's uh, Stellan Skarsgård play him played him in the 2021 film. Yeah, um, and see that, but you know. I think he gives a lot of good things there. I think Sting gives a kind of a you know spirited performance here. Um, yeah, I so it's just that they try to cram in so much material into this movie and do 1984. I think it was not even two hours and thirty minutes. I, I think the runtime it was only two hours and seventeen, so it was way shorter than even the first uh, Dune movie by Dylan Blow and New. So you had to cram in basically all this material here into just this one movie, which was also another tough task. Um, so yeah. I would kind of, for me, I would just kind of give Dune 1984 a stream it, kind of a lowish stream it. I admire the look of the movie uh, and the attempt there to do something that was considered unfilmable in a way. Uh, but yeah, I can I can still recognize it is a mess of a movie in a lot of ways. Uh, what about you? I'm, I'm right there with you. I'd give it a stream it too. Uh, I, I, you know, I think it does some really specific, weird and unusual things very well like some of the costumes and the environments and some of the special effects, but it drops the ball on so many other basic elements that it, it becomes so goofy that, yeah, I mean, I think it's a really fun, bad, so bad it's good experience. I, I think there's, if you have a group of friends that like watching bad movies, this is like prime material for that kind of setting. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, two streamings for Dune 1984. David Lynch. Will you be watching uh, Dune Part Two opening day? I'll. I'm going to try to. I'm definitely going to try to. First gonna week be, at least. Going to be seeing an IMAX. Yeah, you know, there's no. I they closed down the only IMAX that that uh, that was near me a couple a uh, couple of years ago at this point. Probably five, maybe five, six years ago. So they have like the like the kind of fake AMC IMAXs, but they're not like they're not actually IMAXs. So. Uh, in, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll try and go see it at the biggest screen I can. But yeah, yeah. Um, and then somebody told me something bad happens to Zendaya's character, uh, like in it's supposed to be in this second part here. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, it's things don't. It's definitely a a very dark narrative. The first part is is light uh, and and peppy compared to where it goes. So yeah. Because in the first part, I mean, they, I mean, they get betrayed. His father dies in it. I mean, they're on the you know, run. Uh, that's not very <laughs> light narrative there either in the first part. But, no, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to. What I'll say, what the only thing I'll say is, uh, Paul Atreides is, um, he's he's a. I put him on the shelf with like a Walter White or an Aaron Yeager cautionary tale sort of protagonist. Hmm. Okay. Uh okay. Well, I'd be interested to check that out then. Uh, to watch it to see what kind of what happens there. I hope I like it better than the first one. Uh, for sure. Um, I think the first one honestly would be a much better experience. It watched back to back. I really <laughs> think it it, it. it the big thing is that it just cuts off. There's no good stopping point in the book, and so chopping it right kind of halfway through in the middle of it. It just leads to this weirdly unsatisfying ending where the plot just doesn't really feel like it's gone anywhere. Uh, I honestly think, yeah, watching both movies together is going to make both halves uh, come across better. You see, they're riding the worm there. Looks way better than it does in 1984. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely looks way better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll see. 